There's a good reason it's not open. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. yeah, you're right. That's true. Yeah, nothing, not much is open. Well, it gets back to normal. I feel like I've been watching the numbers, and the numbers really are going down for the county, you know, and yeah. in Lake County too. So. It's good. You see? Obviously, you know, it's like little fish in here. Oh yeah, yeah. Are you beating them? No, he's tough. <laughs> He's got a real knack. I don't know what it is. You could you could be in the same hole as he is. He's in the same bait, side by side. So his his. I don't know what it is about him. Yeah, maybe he talks to the fish. He's a fish talker. I don't know. Fish whisperer. Yeah, right. Here he wants I don't whisper my fish. I tell him, where are you at? And then you run away. It's good to see you. Good morning. You get to eat up when you get to eat up. Well, right now we have, he's got so much in the freezer right now, we're not bringing them home. Oh. Just let them go. Wow. So he's just going for size now. Yeah. <laughs> I caught a fish this big. <laughs> Good, good. I do. He tries to. Yeah. Um, he gets that a couple times a week. He's got other things to take down. Does he? He has. He has a whole lot. Yeah. That's cool. That's that's fun. It's hot out there right now. Though. Yeah, we get out early. Okay. And then we're used to exactly like. Oh, good. Okay. You know, it just gets too ungodly hot out there. Okay. So, you know what? Even when you open the little tributaries and all that under the trees, we are still be hot. And then we got the gators. And the snakes. Well, like, I haven't seen any snakes. I've seen gators. In fact, I had one decided it was going to take my arm on the boat. It's beating on its head. But it, it, it's the worm. <laughs> good morning. How we doing? Good, good. Good, good. good. good.
Well, good morning. We got we got him trained. We're good. Good morning, Hope Community Church. How are we doing this morning? Everybody online, wave at us. So glad to see everybody here this morning. Pastor Zepp is back and Sabina. How are you doing? We, we turn the camera over there, but let's go before the Lord in prayer. Lord, just thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you for allowing us to be here to worship you, Father. Thank you for your love and your compassion on our lives. Lord, thank you for your umbrella of protection over us. Thank you for the wisdom being poured out to Pastor Don and the other pastors, Lord. Thank you so much for, for allowing us to hear your word and to learn more about you. Lord, let us draw closer to you this morning through worship. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together. This is still a new song, so uh, glorious.
All right, good morning, everybody. I'm Kenneth Winters, and I want to thank you all for being here. Kenneth! Yeah. <laughs> and I want to thank everybody joining us online as well. That's pretty awesome. Uh, so we have an online program which includes announcements, connection card, and some Bible verses relevant to today's message. And so good, uh, be sure to check it out on the Version Bible app which if you already have it, you can find our service by going to events, and then our service should pop up. Um, but if you do not already have it, you can uh, download it by using the QR code in the hall, or if you have trouble with that, we can, uh, we can help you with the welcome table. Uh, so if you are on Facebook, you can find a link in the, uh, to the program in the comments. So if you are a first time guest, we would love to connect with you and give you a free gift, which is at the welcome table back. So uh, we would like for you to fill out the connection card that I previously mentioned with as much information as you uh, are comfortable filling out. And then if you uh, send that to the welcome table at the end, you can claim your free gift. Um, you can give to the church in one of three ways. You can text 352-444-1771. You can fill out the link in the program, or there's a blue box by the door and uh, near the exit, and you can put your offering in that. If you would like to check in on Facebook, or give the service a like if you are online, um, every check-in or like that we get, we will be donating $1 to Operation Bless Wildwood. And you can find out more about kind of what they're about, uh, either in the program or by going to their personal website, which is blesswildwood.org. Finally, for some of our upcoming events, we have Freedom Sunday, which is September 13th, uh, Back to Church Sunday, September 20th, and the Red Letter Challenge begins September 27th, and we will be giving out more details on that. Uh, finally, we have uh, Zoom, uh, Bible Study and Prayer via Zoom, Thursday mornings, 9.30 to 11, and if you are interested in coming to that, contact us and we will get you the link to the meeting. And finally, we hope you find the service relevant, and thank you for joining us. Thank you, kids! Hey! Let's stand together. Never gonna stop. Stand.
good father. Amen. Amen. Searching for answers, far and wide. 
close out this world, put everything behind you just for a few minutes. see you guys back. It's good to be back here. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for all your support. But it's good to be back in the house of the Lord with the church family to worship. And uh, nice to see everyone. And uh, we are continuing to pray, of course, for all those uh, uh, in the area who are sick and not well. We always like to pray for another ministry in the area. And we would like to pray for uh, City Ministries with Pastor Jones. Uh, Pastor Jones and uh, their congregation, they are doing a lot of stuff within the community to help people. Uh, we have been recipients of some of that stuff here. Uh, some of you had the opportunity to take some of that stuff home. And uh, we like to pray for our church family. Uh, like I said before, many are still contemplating at what time they should return for worship. 
We want to pray for them. We want to pray for their safety, for their good health. And um, so that's uh, uh, God's own way in, uh, in their hearts and lives. Uh, if you may have come to church this morning with a heavy heart, I don't know what that may be. Maybe there is a need in the family. Uh, something is happening. I want you to, to encourage you to take a moment uh, to pray for that situation. It could be within the family and uh, ask God to intervene. So let's go to prayer. And uh, we would also like to pray for our nation, all that's happening, that God will continue to give wisdom and knowledge uh, as the powers to be are working uh, for a solution, especially for the virus. We want to remember all of that. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for your goodness and your mercy towards us. We thank you for the way that you have watched over us as your children this week. Even at times when we did not realize it, but now that we look back at the situation, maybe we have to say, Lord, that you were there, right there with us. You slowed us down. You made us stop. You cause us to pull aside on the side of the road. And we just thank you, God. There are times when you work in our lives and we don't even know it, but we know that you are working and you're watching over us. We thank you and we praise you. I thank you, God, for everyone here today. You know their needs, you know their hearts, you know their lives. And I, I pray, oh God, that you will touch every single one of us. We pray that you will continue to guide and to protect. I pray, oh God, especially for uh, that family who may have come to church this morning with a heavy heart. You know what that need is. And we pray, oh God, that you would open doors. We speak favor on behalf of those families and the situation. And we thank you and we praise you. I pray for Pastor Jones and City Ministries, and I ask, oh God, that you would watch over the people over there as they endeavor uh, to do what they can to reach out to the community, and even for their own church family as they meet together to worship, to encourage, and to strengthen. We thank you, and we praise you. Lord, we pray for our nation. We pray for all that's taking place, and you know all about it. You see everything. You have everything under control. And we just ask, oh God, that you will continue to intervene. Just let your will be done. Give wisdom, knowledge. Be with the powers to be who are working on uh, this virus. And we continue to pray for the safety and for the protection of people, not only in this nation, but across the world. We thank you. And you. I pray that you would uh, bless in our tithes and offering as we are being faithful stores to you as we give today. We ask God that you would bless it, multiply it, and uh, we shall give you all the praise and thanks. Be with Pastor Don as he would come and share with us. I pray, oh God, that you would uh, give him the words that he needs today. May your Holy Spirit use him in a special way, and we shall give you praise and thanks. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Two of our <coughs> young men are heading to college next week, I believe. <laughs> yes, uh, Mark Terrian is one, uh, Wesley. Uh, would you guys come up? We don't want to embarrass you. We just want to <laughs> say a special prayer for you. Uh, you were heading into a, a different territory in life, a lot of adjustments, a new environment, and uh, we want to pray. And church family, pray with me as we uh, lift up uh, Terry and, and Wesley. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for these guys. Thank you for the life they have lived, the example they have shown. And now, as they start off on this new journey, I pray, O oh God, that you would lead, you would guide, 
remove all the stumbling blocks, give them insight and judgment and revelation knowledge, continue, oh God, to help them to stay focused, and we thank you. Help that their, that their learning and their, their grasping would be like never before as they enter into this uh, new territory. We thank you and we praise you. So watch over them, watch over every step of their life. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you guys. Blessings. Peace be upon you. And uh, God is always watching over you. Remember that. We have a two-minute video. This last week I got to... Um, did, I did an interview with, with one of our church family, Lisa Beck, and uh, I don't know if any of you have seen her on online, but at the beginning of this uh, COVID, when we were in lockdown, she did a driveway party and sang uh, God Bless the USA, and that, vi that, that video went viral. It had 10 million uh, people that, that watched it and um, since then she's been she's been doing online concerts and she's she's been sharing the gospel through this and, and people have come to know Christ and so there's just a two minute clip um, where she's sharing some of the results of, of what God has done through this unexpected unexpected event so go ahead Melinda uh, this one girl that I that I've been talking to she lives in Connecticut, and she wants to change her life. She went to church Sunday for the first time in 40 years. Wow. Um, she says, I sit there and listen to your songs, and tears just start to flow. So it's not anything I'm doing. It's God touching these people. He, I'm just the vessel, and he's using me to get on Facebook, and he's touching lives and changing lives. And it, it's just been wonderful to watch. Right. That's awesome. Well, what, one last question. And, and uh, I, mean, I mean, obviously, this isn't something you orchestrated. I mean, you were just doing what you thought you called to, what you were called to do, and, and, and God has kind of opened the floodgates here. But how, how would you encourage others? Like, um, you know, like I can't sing or whatever, but it's, would, would you have any encouragement for, for other people and, and, and kind of how maybe God worked through you? Yes. Um, not everybody can sing and not everybody can preach. And uh, like I told the people last Sunday, I'm really a shy person. And so even though you think you're one way, all you need to do is pray and say, Lord, show me what you want me to do for you. And it might be something totally out of your comfort zone, like praying in front of thousands of people like I'm doing. And singing is not a problem. For some reason, I, I can sing to thousands of people. But speaking off the cuff or just praying is not in my comfort zone. But God is giving me the words because I've asked him to help me in this. He is giving me the words. So if you're wondering what um, you can do for God, just ask and pray, and he will open the doors, because I never thought that these type of doors would be open for me. It's very cool. And, and I just, I want to encourage you to do that. Um, I mean, I was just thinking this last week that, okay, Lord, I didn't choose, I didn't choose these times but these are the times that I live in. And so what do, you, what do you want us to do? How do you want me to live at this time? How do we share the gospel? How do we share uh, hope and, and love with others? So ask him. So I, I want you to do something this morning. You don't have to move or anything like that. Um, you can breathe. That would be helpful. But imagine with me a country. Imagine with me a country that has been blessed by God, and this country, like many others, has done great things and some really bad things. The land is filled with foreigners who do not hold the same beliefs about God and within the religious circles. 
uh, there's dissension and division over politics and, and worship of God. And on top of all this, in this land that we're imagining here, the, the government is corrupt. There's political uprisings all the time, but they're put down with force. There's ethnic tension, and people are oppressed, and pathogens are aggressive and persistent. Let me ask you a question, don't answer it out loud. But in this environment, what kind of leader do you need? What kind of cultural change needs to take place? Now, let me tell you what God did, because I just described first century Israel. It wasn't an imaginative uh, land to speak of. What God did in that, and under those circumstances is he sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, it wasn't the uprisers, it wasn't the zealots, it wasn't Rome, it wasn't the Sadducees, it wasn't the Pharisees, it wasn't Herod, it wasn't Caesar, it wasn't Pontius Pilate that changed the world, it was Jesus Christ. Okay, we, 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 need, to, we need to get that straight, we need, we need to understand that. And, and John's gospel, gospel, we're told this, uh, John 1.14, And the Word, Jesus, became flesh, and He dwelt among us. And we have seen His glory, glory of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Full of grace and truth. This is, this is Jesus. And this same, this same Jesus who, who came, full of grace and truth, listen to what He told His disciples. He, because he told them, these are the type of leaders you're supposed to be. This is the environment you are to create. In Matthew 20, 25 and 26, it says, But Jesus called them to him. This, this is like kind of his last words. I mean, he's, he's getting crucified or he's, he's getting arrested this night. And then he gathers them together and he says, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles, they lord it over them. And, and they're great ones. They exercise authority over them. And he said, it shall not be so among you, but whatever be great among you must be your servant. So, so this is the environment that, that Jesus is sending his leadership out, out at. And so it, right here at Hope Community Church, we're in a sermon series called This Is Us. And we're, and we're looking about who God has called us to be, and, and we're going to look at our third core value, grace-filled. And at Hope Community Church... We're committed. We're committed to this. We're going to pursue community with God and with others in a grace-filled environment. We're committed to this because Jesus' grace will change the world. It's through His grace we are saved. It's, it's through His grace that we enter the kingdom. It's by His grace we are empowered to go out. And so that is, that is what we're going to do. And in the midst of a world that's in chaos... We go back to Jesus and say, what's your plan? What, what is your vision for the world? What is, what is your hope for this church? And rather than spending a lot of time on describing what grace filled looks like, I want to focus on how do we practically get there? How do, how do we get to the place where we're experiencing uh, God's grace in a grace filled environment? If you want to look and see what that looks like, you can look up later, Acts 2, 42 through 47. There's a great... Uh, picture of that. Also in Hebrews 10, 24, 25, I'll read that one to you. It says, let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. So, so, so we gather together and we're here to stir each other up. We're going to stir the pot, but not in a bad way. We're going we're to stir up one another for love and good works, not neglecting meeting as is the habit of sun, but encouraging one another. Now most people, they they zero in on the not neglecting the meat. You can meet all you want, but if you're not stirring up people to love and good works, uh, I, don't, I don't know the, the, the purpose of, of that meeting. It says, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. We need to, to be an encouraging group. As more you see the day drawing near. Most people I talk to say, Pastor, we're closer than ever. I'm like, yeah, chronologically that's how this works. But yeah, we, we're closer, closer than, than ever. And, and so we've got to stir up one another to love and good works. So how do we get there? I'm glad you asked. Uh, let's turn to Philippians chapter 2. And we're going to discover three principles that we need in order for a grace-filled environment to emerge. These are three principles we need. Philippians chapter 2. Let's begin at verse 1. And it's going to be on the screen. 
Philippians 2, it says, So, if there is any encouragement in Christ, if there's any comfort from love, and any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, and being in, in full accord in one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others as more significant than yourselves. Let each of you not only look out for your own interests, but also to the interest of others. I guess we can just pause right there and have an altar call. Um, and I'll be first there. But So Paul starts out, this is the Apostle Paul writes this, and he starts out this chapter and he, and he gives us two things right off the bat. Uh, two things not to do and two things to do. I'll start out with the uh, negative. The, the first two he says, don't be selfish and don't be conceited. Basically things you tell your kids before you send them off to kindergarten. Uh, most of what you needed to learn in life, you, you learned at that really early age. Don't, don't be selfish, don't be conceited. Um, and then there's this positive. He says, see others and their needs as more important. Now, I don't know if any of you get pushback in your own head. You're like, does that mean I need to do what anybody ever tells me to do? Probably not. Jesus didn't live that way. The Apostle Paul who, who wrote this didn't live this way. But it's got to mean something. I think Paul explains it in Philippians 2.21 because he's talking about people that aren't doing this. And here's what he says. He says, For they all seek their own interest and not those of Jesus Christ. In other words, I am to be consumed with Christ and His kingdom. I, I put his, his kingdom before anything else. And then as I'm looking out on people, what, what, what's in their best interest? How, 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 how do I see them as Jesus sees them? What, what, what would Jesus do for that person? And if, and if I'm going to do that, here's what's most likely going to need to happen in my life. Probably yours too. I'm going to need to abandon my previous way of seeing people and doing things, and I need to turn to a new kingdom way. I, I need to turn to Christ's way. Because the king, kingdom of God is not like the kingdoms of this world. They are vastly different. And so my first point here is a grace-filled environment emerges when we turn from living our way to God's kingdom way. We need to make that, that turn. Uh, theologians would call this repentance. We, we, we turn from our way, we turn to Christ's way. Um, so, so what is this grace-filled kingdom way? And how do I tap into that? Well, let's go back uh, to verse 2, because I think this, this one sums up the rest, or at least opens up the rest of the passage. So in verse 2, Apostle Paul says, Complete my joy... He's talking to the church here. He says, be of the same mind, having the same love, and being in full accord and of one mind. He basically has, has kind of like a long sentence to say one thing, be of, of one mind. Now, let's kind of put this into context here and see if we can make sense of this. So what I know from this congregation, the people that, that are part of this, we're from a, we were born in at least six different countries. That's, that's just what I know. When I, when I look out, I go, okay, they were born there, they were born here. We're from northern states, we're from southern states. Some of are from Baptist backgrounds, Pentecostal, Wesleyan, Holiness, Catholic, Lutheran, non-denominational. Sorry if I missed anybody else out there, agnostic backgrounds. We have people that are registered Republicans, registered Democrats. We have black, white, brown, every shade in between. And we even have people in here that call the book, the last book in the Bible, Revelations. Um, now, with that background, is Paul saying, we need to be of one opinion? We all, we all need to have the, the, the same opinion? I mean, I mean think, think about that. Is, is that the glory? Is that the beauty of the church of, of, of God? That, that God is going to take everyone from every tribe, every tongue, every nation, every background, every social economic group, and he's going to give us the same opinion on every subject? If you said yes, let's just have a little discussion about this after, after <laughs> church. Um, 
yeah, that's not going to happen. Of course not. And, and that's not even what the early church did. The, the early church wasn't in agreement on every single opinion. If, if they were, Paul would have never written these words. Uh, Romans 14.1 As for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him. But do not quarrel over opinions. And then there's a good reason why, there's several good reasons why we don't quarrel over, over opinions or disputable matters. And I'm going to say primarily because God has welcomed him. Okay? If, if God receives sees that person, um, we, we need to receive them. We might not agree on, on every I and, and uh, every cross T, but God has welcomed him. Now let me give you two passages because this, this mind of Christ has to mean something. It probably doesn't mean that we agree on, on every single opinion. But let me give you two passages that I think is the key to understanding this. And it's going to un unlock the rest of this passage. Uh, the first one, first one is in 1 Corinthians 2.16. Again, the Apostle Paul is writing and he says this. He says, For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Okay, listen, church, you have been given the mind of Christ. Now, the mind of Christ doesn't make us experts on all subjects, all right? I, I didn't become an expert in microbiology. Um, a lot of my friends have recently. Um, or, or any other subject under the sun. This mind of Christ doesn't mean we come to the same conclusions. But here's what it does do. It informs us and in how we approach every subject, and it informs us on how we approach every person. We, we need to do both of those in a Christ-like manner. We, we need to love one another. We need to be gracious. Because here, here's, God does something so much better than give us all the same opinions. He takes us. He takes us with different backgrounds, different likes, dislikes, skills, backgrounds, cultural preferences, and He unites us together in one purpose, in love and mission for the glory of God. That is so much better than us having the same opinions. Here, here's what I, I think the church, the church ought to look like a bunch of people that ordinarily have no reason to be together, but they are united for the gospel in Jesus Christ. Okay? That's, that's what the church should look like. The second passage that I think unlocks this, it says, Romans 8, 6, for the mind, for this, for to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. So we actually have like a, an option here. And we're, we're talking about, about the mindset. There's one mindset that leads to death and one that leads to life. One is about God's grace working in our lives and flowing out to others. And the other is based on my flesh, my selfish ambitions, and the flesh. The flesh cannot lead to righteousness, all right? It, that's not the path. That, that, you know, you're going down a road and you go, I know where this road ends. And it doesn't end in righteousness. Mindset on the flesh doesn't end in righteousness. And the mindset on that flesh, it's, it's, a, it's about my own consumption. <clears throat> it's, I look out and, and, and I just become this consumer for my short-term satisfaction and it leads to death. And the, the book, there's a book called Sentness, S-E-N-T-N-E-S-S. -E -E -S. I know my spell checker doesn't like it either. But the book's called Sentness. And the author says this, If we define religion as to what gives people identity, belonging, and purpose, then consumerism is the dominant religious alternative to Christianity in Western countries. Some people think Islam and atheist are the biggest challenges to the Christian faith. But we maintain consumerism is far more challenging and pervasive. And it influences not just people outside the church, but those of us in the church, affecting our whole approach to what we believe and practice. So, think, what is consumerism? It's, it's a social economic order and ide ideology that encourages us for the action acquisition, easy for me to say, of goods and services at an ever increasing amount. Let's let's put this in the biblical story. Think back in the garden. 
Adam and Eve, they have everything they want. God puts them in this perfect environment. Instead of enjoying God's peace and, and universal flourishing, which, which Hebrews would, would call shalom, Adam and Eve, they decided that God's gracious provision was not enough. That's, that's the choice they made in the garden. Here, here's what the flesh says. Your flesh, my flesh says this. God is playing an adult version of musical chairs. There's not enough to go around. And in this adult version of musical chairs that God is playing with us, this is the flesh, not me, okay? In this version, not only do I need to win, but somebody needs to lose. There's not enough. And when I come to the place where I say God is holding back and there's not enough, here's the questions we begin to ask. Even as a recipient of God's grace, am I enough? Are you, brothers and sisters in Christ, are you enough? Is, is God's grace enough? That is, that is the most deadly question that, that we can ask. And with those doubts in our head, we begin to make destructive decisions as we relate to one another in community. And by the way, because we are designed for community, we form tribes, which in and of itself is not bad. The, the, the problem, the problem is, is when we participate in those tribes, let me, let me coin a phrase, you heard it here first, maybe, um, Tribal consumerism. Here's, here's what we do. We take our tribe's needs, our desires, our likes, and we put, we put them above others. It's us versus them. It's fear and dis distrust thrive in this kind of environment. Here, here's the reality. Network news exists because of this. Partisan politics exist and they thrive on this. Now, let me say this. Tribes in and of themselves are not the problem. That, that is not the problem. We, we, need, we need communities in, in, in which we function. Here, here's the reality. God, God created some tribes. Right? The nation of Israel. The church. You could loosely call those tribes. But he created them not to be over and against others, but to be a blessing to others. That, that is how he formed the nation of Israel. Israel. I will bless you so that you will be a blessing. He says, church, I'm going to gather you together so you will go out and be a blessing, that, that you will share the good news of the gospel. That is, is how we are to live. And that is how we become a grace-filled environment. We need to dethrone ourselves and put Christ on the center of our lives. The problem is, is you and I, at least I do, sometimes I see things that can't give life. And in, in our self-centeredness and our tribalism, we dehumanize one another. Instead of seeing people as someone that's made in the image and likeness of God, here's what people become. People become products. And when people, people become products, some of them are useful. And some of them are, are not useful. And this is not the mind of Christ. That is the mind set on, on, on the flesh. So a grace-filled environment emerges when we turn from living our own way to God's kingdom way. And we are shaped by the mind of Christ. So in this call toward a kingdom way of living, Paul's, Paul's going to show us what the mind of Christ is. All right? So we're going to open this up here. Verse 5, Philippians 2, he says, Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. This, this is yours to have. He says, uh, verse 6, speaking of Jesus, he says, Who though he was in the form of God, he did not count equality with God as a thing to be grasped, as something to be held on to. But he emptied himself, taking on the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. All right, so we need to understand this. When, when I'm living out this new kingdom way, this, is, this doesn't mean I need to look at myself and go, well, I'm just a worm. 
I'm nobody, I'm nothing, I'm a, I'm a doormat. I'm, I'm a, let's go back in this context here. Jesus viewed himself as God, okay? That's a pretty darn high view of yourself, right? Would, would everybody agree with that, that that's a high view? Yeah, it doesn't get higher, okay? He viewed himself as God. Here's what's important about that view. It's accurate. It, it, it's appropriate. So, so we, we don't need a high view. We don't need a low view. We need an accurate view. We need to go back to the scripture and say, okay, God, who am I? Well, God says you have the, the, you have the mind of, of Christ. And so we don't, we don't see others as, as more important because we're doormats. We do so because we have turned. We've turned from living our own way, a lower way, to God's way, a kingdom way, a higher way. You're an image bearer of God. You have, you have a high value. You have a high calling on your life. Jesus had the highest calling, and this is what, what he did. Jesus knew that he was God, but, but he doesn't hold on to it. This, this is kind of this, this contrast, right? Where you take a, think of an Adam and Eve. They say, God's holding back. And so they reach for more. What does Jesus Christ do? This, this is my, my Father's provided everything. And He doesn't hold on to that. It, it is so strange. Every time I, I think about this, the guy that should have had a Messiah complex did not. He didn't live fighting for that last chair, thinking, okay, the music's going to stop at any point and somebody's going to miss out on that chair and, and, and i got to get that. He didn't question. He didn't question, is my Father's plan enough? He wasn't consumed by what the world offered. He was consumed with his Father's will. And what does he do when he gives the chance to consume all the world offers? Here's what he does when he's given that opportunity. Verse 8, in being found in human form, he humbled himself. He became obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross. Therefore... Therefore, man, I wish Wesley, you were over there. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed upon him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. What an amazing turn of events right here in this passage. So a grace-filled environment emerges when we turn from living our way to God's kingdom way, and we are shaped by the mind of Christ, and then we are anchored in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We've got to be centered in Him. It's, it's got to be about Him. A grace-filled environment is centered in Him. He's the way. He's the truth. He's the life. He's our example. As Francis Chan would say, sometimes, too often, we look at Jesus and we say, He's a great Savior, but He's a poor role model. In other words, we're thankful for what He did, but we're not, but, but we're not willing to follow. Jesus is both a great Savior and both a great role model. Paul says, have this mind in you that was in Christ Jesus. And the one who lowered himself, the one who became humbled, the one who didn't need to do any of those things, is the one who is exalted. And time and time again, the Bible tells that those who seek to exalt themselves are the ones who become come lowered. Now here's the good news. The good news is though every one of us has fallen short. Every single one of us has, has done that. But every single one of us has the opportunity to receive the benefits of the one who did this right. We, we have the benefit of Christ's obedience. And we're to put our faith, we're to put our trust in Him. Receiving Him as Lord and Savior. Thanking Him for what He did on the cross. And then the Bible tells us that those of you that are in Christ Jesus, that you now have the same mind that is Christ. And we're to go out with that same mind, that same attitude and share the good news of Jesus Christ. Because we have the mind of Christ, and it is Christ that dwells within us. And we, we have this new life to live, submitted to the Holy Spirit of God working through us. Let, let me pray, and then I'll have the worship team come up. Heavenly Father, wow, thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. 
God in flesh who humbled himself and became obedient, who taught us how to lead, live, how to, how to serve, how to love. We thank you for that, Lord. And I pray for anybody here that doesn't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that today would be the day that they receive him. But today would be the day they say, I receive you as Lord and Savior. Thank you for dying on the cross. And Father, I pray for the rest of us that, that we would live out in a grace-filled environment. That we would humble ourselves and submit to you. We love you and we praise you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>